right, so I'm Allie, and I'm the founder of a social media impact campaign called Start From Here, and I'm gonna talk about how media can positively affect the fate of America's homeless youth, but thought I'd share some facts. So 2.5 million, 2.5 million American youth every year experience homelessness. 40% identifies LGBT, which means that 40% are coming out to their community and facing discrimination and rejection. 50% are fleeing from some sort of physical, emotional, or sexual abuse. 17% are engaging in survival sex, which is defined as trading sex for a bed to sleep in, a hot meal, drugs, or money. Latino and African American youth are adversely affected. And only 20% are being counted because counts often include only those who are physically sleeping on the street on any given night. But the majority of homeless youth are sleeping in cars, on couches, on the floors of friends of friends. And they're not being counted and they're being cut off from public services. The good news is that in 2010, President Obama set a goal to end youth homelessness by 2020. And this unleashed an array of federal and local level initiatives. And we do have the political will like never before to end youth homelessness. Um, count them. Pending federal legislation will make access to government services more readily available to more youth because we're changing the policy on how these young people are being counted. Housing First initiatives, which posit that to end youth homelessness, you provide them access to safe, secure, affordable housing, have all but eradicated homelessness in New Orleans, Phoenix, and Salt Lake City. Once housed, youth need support reintegrating into academic, vocational, and job opportunities, um, and many require therapeutic support. So nonprofits need uh, funding to provide these services. But what can media do? Media plays a critical role in ending youth homelessness, which is a goal that's in our sights. Our dominant visualization of youth homelessness is a guy who looks like he hasn't showered in three weeks, propping up a sign with a bulldog next to him, but he is not the majority. In fact, these guys are. This is Blair, Daniela, and Jesse, and they all spent their youth homeless. Jesse found his dad dead of a drug overdose when he was six, and his mom couldn't keep things together. So he spent his childhood homeless in Venice, sleeping in cars and construction sites and in dilapidated buildings. This is Blair. She had the perfect two-child, two-parent uh, childhood. Her dad died suddenly her freshman year, leaving her mom with debt and an eviction notice. Um, at the same time, her career as a beauty pageant was ascendant, and she was literally the reigning Miss Colorado when she was homeless. This is Daniela. She transitioned suddenly at the age of 15 from male to female, and her family kicked her out. And she knew that if she could just keep herself in school in Westchester County and get a diploma, she'd have a chance at a future. So she survived by living in the subway. So back to what media can do. Media can educate, can raise awareness, and it can build empathy. Can build and demonstrate public support, which in turn influences politicians who might not necessarily be thinking first about vulnerable youth. Policy change at the federal level is in process, but the greatest change can come at the municipal level via mayors. Housing First programs are often their initiatives. Media attention has been shown to positively affect their priorities and their areas of focus. Finally, it's important for media to tell the story of exemplary nonprofit organizations who are working at the front lines, like these ones. And there are there also are participatory organizations um, in Start From Here. So if you want to learn more about Start From Here, you can. Um, my website, my email, and the website are here. And I thank you so much for your time. Yeah.